Hi, I'm Michelle Landsberg, and I'm the director of Advanced Beef River. And with me today, I have Mark Schmidtke. And Mark is going to tell us about something new in Thief River Falls, uh, an exciting new resource. And I'm really uh, glad that Mark has taken a few minutes to tell us about it. So Mark, maybe before we get started, maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit uh, for those that may be viewing this video, and then we'll dive into a few questions. Sure, that sounds great, Michelle. So first of all, thanks for um, having me today and just to talk a little bit about this project, which we'll get into momentarily. But again, my name is Mark Schmidtke. I actually grew up in Thief River Falls, uh, moved away uh, because of work for a number of years and moved back about 10 years ago and have been working at DigiKey. Currently, I'm the Community Relations and Events Manager at DigiKey. And I've also served on, the, I've been serving on the Thief River Falls Chamber of Commerce uh, for the last few years, as well as the Sanford Hospital Board. And it is great to be back in Thief River Falls and uh, love the community and all the people that we have met and uh, re-met. I guess over the years, it's been great to uh, catch up with everybody again and, and be here. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, just, just so people know, we're talking about a new welcome packet. And um, this has been a long time in the works. Mark, can you tell me how did this project get started? Sure. It's a, it's a, just as it's been a long time in the works, it's a little bit of a long story, but I'll start. In 2018, there were a group of 24 of us from Thieber Falls in the area that were selected to be a part of the Blandon Community Leadership Program. And so we went away uh, for a week of leadership training for rural communities, and that was over near Grand Rapids and received some great training through that. And during that time, one of the people in the group shared their experience when moving to Thief River Falls and how they were looking for resources but couldn't find anything, or they found a few but not a lot in, in many different places. So that in turn led to one of the projects that a small group of us at the Blandon program, uh, one of the assignments is we worked on starting and updating a welcome guide or welcome package for Thief River Falls and sharing the information about the community. And not long after the Blandon Leadership Program, Advanced Thief River initiated a campaign called Making It Home. And one of the action points coming from that campaign was actually updating the welcome package. So the work that had begun as a project during the Blandon leadership program at continued and people from the community were invited to be a part of that project through the making it home campaign and we began to meet and start gathering information and figuring out what would people want to see in a welcome guide or a welcome packet when they're moving to town or even residents that have been here for a long time what is it that they'd want to see and that's kind of how it started and and how the project began. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Um, so lots of community involvement all the way through. Yes. Um, you know, what is the purpose of this welcome packet? And why, why do you think it's so important? Yeah, I feel the purpose of something like this is to share with people um, that, you know, all that there is to, in Thief River Falls, all that Thief River Falls in the area really has to offer, whether it's recreation or joining uh, community organizations, volunteers, all the different services that are available and so on. And so if people are considering a move to Thief River Falls or have been residents and have made Thief River Falls their home, it's really a, I feel like a nice tool just to give you an overall or a more comprehensive picture of all that's available and all the different things that people uh, can get involved with. And, and really our goal was to help promote our community and the people that I had the privilege of working with on this on this uh, welcome packet and welcome guide, I mean, they, they've been residents of Thief River Falls. They enjoy the community. They enjoy living here and all the friendships that they've met and kind of wanted to just share our passion with others. Yeah, and you know, I know, um, I know I've seen this welcome packet. I Many people probably haven't seen it yet because it just came out. But uh, what kind of information, you've touched on a few of the things, but uh, what kind of information will people be able to find in that welcome packet? Sure. Well, during the small group discussions in the Making It Home campaign, the group that I was involved in uh, seemed to have discussions like this on a regular basis. 
about what is there to do in Thief River Falls or what is there to do in the area. And as our discussion went on, um, somebody would say, oh, last weekend I did this activity or you know, I, I was involved with this group. And some of us would look at each other and, and just say, oh, I didn't know that was available in town. You know, I wasn't aware of that. How, tell me more about that and, and how I could get involved with it. And as we kind of talked about that, um, what we wanted to do is try to add the information in the welcome guide again to let people know all the organizations that are in town, the different activities, the recreation, the different services in the area. And we really broke it down into six uh, key categories. One of those is health and wellness. And of course, that would include obvious things like the hospital and clinics and doctors and dentists and so on. Another uh, section is called lifelong learning. And you can find information there about or links to information about daycares, um, information about the public school system in Thief River Falls, some of the private schools in Thief River Falls, community education, and even our community college. There's just links and information about that. Another area is community involvement. And there we have a listed a number of organizations where people can serve or be involved with uh, other folks. And that might include things like the Rotary or the Lions, Chamber of Commerce or, or different groups like that. And it'll have information about that, little definitions, but it'll also have contact information. Another one of the key categories is recreation and arts. So a lot of our youth uh, recreation um, activities are there listed there. And again, how to get a hold of them, as well as some of our adult uh, activities or recreation, such as you know, how do you, if you want to be in part of the curling club, how do you get involved with that? Or archery, how do you get involved with that? But it also includes arts, like the Thiefer Falls Area Community Theater, or the, the, the bands or uh, choirs and whatnot. So again, just a lot of information. And then finally, the last couple of categories, one is safety and services. So just talks a little bit about some of our um, safety in the area, such as our police officers, our sheriff, uh, and deputies, um, the fire department, the ambulance, and then some of the services. Uh, who offers internet or how do you get connected to internet? If you're moving to town, who do I contact to find out about those things? And then finally, the last sec or one of the last sections that uh, we had is dining and business. And again, that in that section, we have a lot of links that we found um, is to restaurants, like the Chamber of Commerce will have some links or visit Thiefer Falls We'll have some links to different businesses and dining. And um, so people can check on those links and find some directories of different kinds of businesses, different kinds of restaurants that we have. And in that section too, we also included, Michelle, as you know, we talked about a, a section about Advanced Thief River, if people are interested in developing or investing in Thief River Falls, but then also a, a section of um, help wanted uh, per se. If people are looking for jobs, where do I go to find some of that information. And so that's all included within the welcome guide or the welcome packet. And again, it's you know as comprehensive as we could. I'm sure we've missed some things along the way, but we tried to make it as comprehensive about the community as possible. Wow, Mark, that really does sound pretty comprehensive and what a fantastic resource you have pulled together. Uh, I have been just so impressed uh, as I've looked through the pages of it um, and just how you've kind of grouped things, it makes it so easy to find the type of information that you're looking for and, and that those contacts. Um, I thought it was so interesting how you mentioned uh, when you were part of the Thief River Falls Making It Home effort, how your group, your small group was sitting around talking and uh, some, you know, someone mentioned something they were involved in and others in the group had no awareness of it. It's just amazing how in a small, you know, community the size of Thief River Falls, you think that, you know, if you've been in the community for a while, you'd know about, you know, all the stuff going on. But even for residents that have lived here for a while, uh, you know, it's just hard to maybe be aware of everything that's going on. So, right. um, yeah, very interesting. So, what has your, you know, what has your role been in this project? And maybe you could talk a little bit about who else has been involved with you. Sure, sure. So um, actually my role in the project, um, I guess 
is, is really working alongside that team of people, like, like you mentioned, the others that have been involved with that. I would maybe help coordinate some meetings and you know, set up some meeting times on our calendars. But really it was this group of people that really worked hard to pull information together once we had it together and worked on our on the design, then we would review that and you know do all the checking for spelling errors and grammar and, and whatnot. And you know, reviewed too, is this the information that should be in this? Are we missing something? And and even as we went along, we would hear about additional things as well. Somebody would share with us, it's like, oh, hey, you forgot about this organization or this um, activity or something. And it was like, oh my goodness. So we would, you know, didn't want to leave that out. And so we would add those things in and gather more information. And like I said earlier, I really have the privilege of working alongside a really a great team. And I'll just, I just want to list them and as everybody really worked together and again, reviewed together and encouraged each other as we were doing this. So I uh, worked with John Sievertson, Meg Colden, Ashley Neuhaus, Sean Ranham, Steve Lillisall, Kelsey Broding, Sarah Klossner, and recently our new Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Vanessa Ellison, has also joined, joined us in, in reviewing and working on that packet on that welcome guide as well. So just a good group of people and as we work through the process and with COVID and everything like that, we got delayed a bit. So it really was a probably about a year and a half uh, project by the time we are wrapping it up here, a year and a half or even longer by the time we're getting it wrapped up. Yeah, and I know I know you played, you know, you're probably downplaying your role a little bit. I know you played a pretty significant role in, you know, keeping this moving because I know you and I have talked about it over the last year and a half <laughs> several times. Um, and I know one of the things that you did was you worked on a grant application to the Blandon Foundation. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and what the result was? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Be glad to do that. So as a part of being in the Blandon Leadership Group, one of the things that they left us with was the opportunity to apply for grants to the Blandon Foundation to work on community projects uh, such as this. And I did work along the side with you, Michelle. I know we reviewed that grant and, and you know, are we communicating the right information and things of that nature. And we were fortunate enough to receive a grant from the Blandon Foundation, which really funded the initial uh, design and um, printing of the project, you know, the initial uh, part of that. And so that was fantastic to do. And I should say the group of people that helped put it together and pull it together was really a volunteer effort. You know, so they gave of their own time and, and uh, resources or efforts to meet and come together to uh, pull this together. But again, the grant through the Blandon Foundation is really what helped us be able to take that step to move ahead uh, with the funding that we received there. And um, one of the, the other pieces with, with funding as we move on we, we don't want to make this just a one time, uh, hey, we did the uh, welcome packet, we did the welcome guide, you know, it's printed and so now we're good. We want, it ha we want to be able to sustain that. So one of the next things we'll be doing is looking for ways, how do we sustain that project and really provide annual updates to it and additional printing that will need to be done. And so that's one of the next things I know that will be at least talking about and working on of, of, of figuring out how do we sustain this and keep it up to date as we move ahead. Yeah, well, a big shout out to the Blandon Foundation, you know, for their contribution to this, to this effort, you know, um, that's awesome. And uh, of course, the community leadership program that, that mm -hmm. um, so many of you had the opportunity to participate in, uh, I know that there are more impacts that have been felt in the community as a result of that. But I think this is a pretty significant one. And I know uh, speaking from the standpoint of Advanced Beef River, uh, one of the things that we hear from our employers who are uh, really needing uh, employees to fill open positions, you know, but the labor market is so terribly tight. One of the things is retention uh, of employees. And you know, if they recruit somebody to live in the area, you know, getting them to stay, retaining them in the community. And this is one of the things we learned from the Thief River Falls Making It Home effort. Um, sometimes 
someone will move into a community, but if they're not able to really fully plug in and get engaged, get involved in the community, put down roots, they probably won't stick around. So, you know, we might, you know, undertake a lot of effort uh, trying to recruit someone to live in the community, but if we don't hang on to them, uh, we, you know, it's a net zero. <laughs> so uh, this, this idea of a welcome packet and getting people plugged into what's going on in the community, I think is, is just such a great strategy for helping with that. Yeah, and I, I agree with that, Michelle. And I think, um, you know, one of the, or some of the information in there are some of the amenities that are available in the community as well. And I know there's one page and it's, it's also in the Visit Thief River Falls guide as well, but it talks about our parks and all the different things that are available in each of the parks, the different activities, playground equipment or um, Frisbee golf or whatever it might be. And so again, I, I agree, it's just sharing those amenities, but then also helping people get connected with others. You know, they might have to make an email or a phone call to meet someone, but you know, there might be some common interests in some of the organizations or recreational activities, or they might have students in, you know, prowler baseball or, or soccer or something like that as well, where they can make those connections. Oh, very, very cool. Um, I'd like to say if somebody wants a copy of the packet, they'll need to move to the community. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, uh, maybe we can make it a little easier than that. Where, where can people find the welcome packet, people that are already in the community, residents? Where, where can they find it? You bet. So one of the areas right now, we just have the digital version out. The printed copy or the paper copy is actually at the printer. I checked with them this week, and that should be completed hopefully by the end of next week, and then it'll take a little time to assemble the packet, um, all the information and the pages of information in there. Um, it'll be, I feel like it'll be presented really well, uh, very, very nicely, very professional uh, too. So different pictures and the different categories we talked about will have tabs so you can easily find the information that you're looking for. But again, right now we have the digital version available. I know it's on the Advanced Thief River website and the chamber website if they haven't already i know they were going to have a link uh, to that so the thief river falls chamber of commerce and i believe visit thief river falls will also be adding a link to their website too so there'll be a number of places where you'll be able to pick up the digital version and then once we have the the paper copies printed and put together um, don't have all the locations where they will be. I'm guessing the Visit Thiefer Falls, the Chamber of Commerce, they're in the same building, but they will, the printed copies will be available there. And then I'm uh, hoping some of the businesses around town and uh, maybe like right now, currently people can pick up Thiefer Falls information at the utility office. And so we'll hopefully have some there as well. Yeah, so if somebody wants to view uh, and download the guide, the welcome guide today, uh, they, all they need to do is go to wheretworiversmeet.com, wheretworiversmeet.com. And um, that's actually a really great website uh, that was developed, again, as, as a result of the Waking at Home effort, a uh, landing page for people that want to find all of the information about the community. So. Um, if people want to see that guide, where two rivers meet.com is the place to go. And as you mentioned, Mark, many other uh, organizations in the community are linking to that guide, and you can probably find it at those, their, those websites as well. Uh, it will link to that uh, where two rivers meet website. So, uh, is there anything else that you think people need to know about the welcome packet before we wrap up today? Sure. You know, probably not informationally wise, but one of the things that just we just wanted to share as well is, you know, we really worked hard to try to make it as comprehensive as possible. And with the different networks that people had, the different relationships that people have had, we hope we didn't miss anything, you know, any organizations or volunteer opportunities uh, and so on. And um, certainly we know we maybe did. Um, you know, even as we were putting it together, we would hear about new things like, oh my goodness, we need to add that uh, information in to the welcome guide. And so if we did, there is actually in the welcome guide, an email address um, 
that you can, you know, it's a just a Gmail. I think it's welcome packet uh, at gmail.com. I can't remember it right off the top of my head, but they can certainly email that and we'll we'll check that. And when we do our annual review, we'll look at all of those things and adding those in or um, whatever the case might be. So that would that would just be the one thing. Again, we tried to make it as comprehensive as possible, but we know we probably missed things that we weren't aware of or that we didn't know about or things that are new and, and starting up too. So that just wanted to make that information out there. We do have an avenue to share information about that with us. Awesome. So just encouraging people, if, if uh, your business or organization isn't in the guide, just be sure to, to uh, look for that email within the guide. And uh, as it's updated in years to come, uh, that information can be added. And I, I should say so, too, Michelle, with the, yeah. with the businesses, we just added different links on there. We didn't uh, list all, all the businesses and restaurants out, but we added the different links for them to, uh, for people that people could go to and find information that was already out there. Um, instead of recreating the wheel, <laughs> just using some of the other resources and tools that were there. Yeah, that makes sense, Mark. Well, thank you so much for talking to us uh, about the guide. And I know this is going to be an excellent resource for the community and an excellent resource uh, for people that are new to the community, as well as those that have lived here for a long time. Uh, and congratulations to you and uh, the whole uh, group that worked on it uh, for, for bringing this uh, project to fruition. It's, it's awesome. You bet. Well, thanks for having us, Michelle, and hope you have a great weekend. You too, thanks. All right, bye.